All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the opening ceremony of Plymouth County Veteran Treatment Court. Um, my name is Paula Clifford, and I preside over the Plymouth County Veterans Treatment Court. Um, we're very fortunate here to have our color guard from Brockton Police who will open the ceremony. Um, when they come down and present the colors, we're going to start this ceremony as we start every Veterans Treatment Court session across the street or down the street at our um, Brockton Courthouse, and that is with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance will be followed by our national anthem. And I'm pleased to um, say that we have Sergeant James Connor from the State Police who will sing the national anthem for us. Um, so in a moment as you rise and recite the pledge and listen to or sing the national anthem, I ask that you keep in mind all of our veterans um, who are called to serve, who volunteer to serve, and who need our help. So with that, um, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, who say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Please be seated. Thank you to the Brockton Color Guard and also to Sergeant James Connor from the State Police. That was great. Um, as I indicated earlier, my name is Paula Clifford and I am a district court judge, primarily sitting here in Brockton. I'm also presiding judge of the Plymouth County Veterans Treatment Court, which serves all of southeastern Massachusetts. Um, when I first became a judge, I moved quite a bit around the state and around the region, and I was lucky enough to be able to sit in Dedham in the Norfolk County Veterans Treatment Court with Judge Mary Hogan Sullivan, who is in the back. Um, and I found that experience to uh, be quite, um, I was very passionate about what I saw and the work that she was doing. Um, and I took that to heart as I moved around and found my place here in Brockton. Um, and with the VA right down the street and many veterans coming before us in the court, it seemed only to make sense to start a um, veterans Treatment Court right here in Brockton. So um, I was lucky, around, lucky enough um, to have the great support of some people who you'll be speaking, uh, hearing from today um, and others who are here, others could not be here, but I want to um, mention um, with the support of our presiding judge, Julie Bernard, um, our regional administrative judge, Kevin Cunningham, 
our um, clerk magistrate, uh, Mr. Kevin Creedon, our, uh, uh, excuse me, our chief probation officer, Mike Branch, our uh, probation deputy, Mike Coelho, our DA, Tim Cruz, um, and some of the people, as I indicated, we'll, you'll hear from today, we got together and we were able to formulate a plan to start this Veterans Treatment Court here um, in, in Brockton. Um, before I introduce our speakers, uh, I'm going to ask that if there are any veterans or people who are currently serving in the military, if you could please stand up. I want to say thank you for your service on behalf of everyone at the Brockton District Court and the Plymouth County Veterans Treatment Court and myself. Thank you for your service. Um, President Harry Truman once said, our debt to the heroic, heroic men and valiant women um, in the service of our country can never be repaid. Um, our debt, they have earned our undying gratitude. Uh, I am not a veteran. Uh, I am the proud wife of a Marine Corps veteran who um, was called to serve in Fallujah, Iraq when my daughter was three months old. I am the daughter of a Navy veteran, and my dad is here today with my mom. Uh, my, my mother and father-in-law both are Army veterans. Um, so I'm not a veteran, but I am very much appreciative of your service, and I appreciate the service of all veterans and veteran families, so thank you. Um, I would like to um, recognize some people who are in attendance here today. Um, we are so honored to have Congressman Steve Lynch um, with us today. Thank you. Um, we're honored to have several members of the trial court leadership here with us today. Chief Justice of the trial court, um, Paula Carey, Court Administrator John Williams, um, our Chief of the District Court, Paul Dolly, um, who has a set special soft spot for his place in Brockton here. We also, um, uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our regional judge, Kevin Cunningham, and Judge Mary Hogan Sullivan, who I mentioned earlier, the founder of the first Veterans Treatment Court here in Massachusetts. Um, an all-around wealth of knowledge and support to me as I began uh, with our team, our Veterans Treatment Court. I'd also rec like to recognize Sheila Casey, who's a specialty court administrator, and Jason Thomas, the Veterans Program Coordinator. Um, I'd also like to recognize um, the District Attorney from Plymouth County, Tim Cruz, who's here, and the District Attorney from Bristol County, um, Tom Quinn, who is here, and their respective uh, offices for being here to support this day and to support our treatment court. Um, I'd like to recognize Clerk Magistrate Kevin Creedon and many of his um, clerk's office staff and clerks that are here. Thank you for your ongoing support. I'd like to thank um, Acting Mayor Moises Rodriguez and his Chief of Staff, um, Tobias Cowens, for their support and presence here today and help with um, getting this beautiful building here for this ceremony today. I would also like to recognize and congratulate newly elected, <clears throat> excuse me, newly elected Mayor Robert Sullivan who was here earlier, I, I think he may still be here, and congratulate him on his recent win. I'd like to um, recognize Representative Sullivan, who is here. Thank you for your presence and your um, support. And I'm sorry if I missed anyone um, with that list. I also would like to thank the Probation Department for their um, commitment, their ongoing commitment and their efforts to start this court and to keep it going, their ongoing support. In particular, I'd like to recognize and, and shout out to Deputy Mike Coelho. Uh, excuse me, Deputy Commissioner Mike Coelho, um, who um, gave us great probation officers for our Veterans Treatment Court, so thank you for that. I'd also like to recognize uh, Deputy Commissioner Parmesan Eiffel and Regional Supervisor Harriet Beasley, and First Assistant Chief Probationer, uh, Probation Officer Michelle Rowden um, for all their hard work. Um, I'd also like to recognize Vin Laurenti and his staff um, who are here and uh, from Community Corrections who are a great partner um, with not just the Veterans Treatment Court but with Drug Court and just with the court in general. I'd like to thank various members of law enforcement. I'd like to thank um, Sheriff McDonald who's here, Joseph McDonald, um, and also thank you for sharing your great um, employees with us, uh, Brian and George, who do a great job for um, for their support of, the, uh, of our Veterans Treatment Court, um, for all the other sheriffs and their uh, work in outreach and reentry. I'd like to thank um, all the chiefs of police who are here. I'd also like to thank our court officers who are here. I know many of you in the law enforcement field, whether it be in the police field, or in the sheriffs and in the court officers, many of you are veterans. Um, and we thank you for your service and we thank you for what you do for our veterans um, on the street, in the jails, um, and in the courthouse, so thank you for that. Um, I'd also like to thank the officials from the VA that are here. Director Ng, thank you for being here. And I know there are several people from the VA 
um, and we couldn't do what we do without you. So thank you for your ongoing support on behalf of veterans. Um, an additional thank you to many VSOs, veteran service officers. I know there are many of you here and many of you help us um, with what we're doing and also help veterans um, that are not court involved. Uh, a special thank you, I don't know if he's in the room, but Dave Farrell, who's the VSO here in Brockton. Dave, thank you. Um, we've been um, interrupting Dave's work for about a week trying to get this, uh, this ceremony ready and um, I appreciate your efforts, um, Dave, thank you. Um, I'd also like to recognize Massasoit College, uh, Community College. I don't know if Dean Kareen Savignon is here. Yes, she is, thank you. Nice to see you. Um, and she um, and Massasoit, the great support of our Veterans Treatment Court and just our court in general. Um, and uh, Vice President Mitchell has been a great support of ours, so I, I appreciate the help that Massasoit has um, provided. So, I am happy to introduce uh, or to be able to introduce Chief Justice of the Trial Court, Paula Carey. Um, Chief Justice Carey has dedicated herself to the prolif proliferation of treatment court. She's a great support of what we are doing in the Veterans Treatment Court. Um, the Trial Court, as many of you know, has seen a great expansion of treatment courts under the leadership of Chief, Ju Chief Justice Carey and Court Administrator Williams. Um, we are grateful for her tireless work um, that she does to support this important effort. So with that, Chief Justice Carey. Thank you, Judge Clifford. Um, it's wonderful to be here. It really is truly an amazing event. Uh, I, we love to come, John and I. Uh, we cross the Commonwealth on many occasions, but these are the real, really, truly the events that um, are so meaningful uh, for us to be here. So. Um, thank, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm delighted to be here to celebrate the sort of official opening of the uh, Plymouth County Veterans Treatment Courts, although I know you're taking people from both Plymouth and, and Bristol County uh, in this uh, treatment court session. But I know that Judge Clifford mentioned a few people, but I want to echo um, some of the thanks that she um, ha has given um, because I don't, I can, we can't understate that it takes a village to make something like this happen and to actually make it work. And uh, great, first great thanks um, go to Judge Clifford uh, for her tireless effort in getting this up and running. And really, it's, it's a well oiled machine already, um, and we, we haven't even gotten ourselves really truly uh, completely underway. So I'd like to thank Chief Justice Dolly, who has been tireless in terms of his support for specialty courts, uh, where we are just, we've expanded exponentially. And for those of you that know the trial court, the district court is the true community court, um, and m most of our uh, expansion has occurred in the district court, so it really has been a, uh, an effort uh, to make it happen. The same is true with probation. It's a, it's a, true, a true effort by probation uh, to make sure that, they, that that happens. Judge Hogan Sullivan, I would be remiss. She was, is the director of specialty courts in the district court, um, but she is the true champion of, of veterans treatment courts. She started it um, when it was just, uh, you know, a, a thought in her head uh, in Massachusetts in Dedham. Uh, and she really has truly been the model. And she has mentored so many judges as they started, not only veterans treatment courts, but also um, many drug courts, um, mental health courts, and frankly, all of the specialty courts that we have uh, in Massachusetts at this point. Uh, Congressman Lynch, it's Truly wonderful to see you again. Um, I, you know, he's a true supporter of the Massachusetts judiciary. Um, he's been instrumental in getting a tremendous amount of funding for this state um, to continue our efforts, not only in veterans treatment courts, but drug courts and the like. And frankly, we couldn't do it without you. So we're very grateful for you coming here and showing your support, not just by your presence, um, but by actions in terms of uh, of the grants that we're, we're able to get. Um, Secretary Urena, it's wonderful um, for you to come. Uh, you're always such a staunch supporter and a great uh, partner in all we do uh, in the Commonwealth uh, re related to, to veterans. Um, uh, Plymouth County uh, DA uh, Tim Cruz, um, Brockton Mayor uh, Rodriguez, um, uh, congratulations. Is he still here? Uh, no, I think he left. Hmm? Oh, Sullivan just left. I apologize. Sorry about that. Um, uh, and, and I also want to thank all of the many probation officers that really truly dedicate the, the, themselves. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the team because while the judge truly is the, the linchpin for any specialty court, um, 
it also takes a village because it takes the team to help that, the judge. Um, so probation officers, Phil Landry, Dave Engring, Kristen Pierce, Veterans uh, Justice Outreach Coordinator from the Veterans uh, Administration, Ra Rachel Seed, uh, Defense Attorney Dave Humphreys, uh, ADA Jason Heron, uh, who works in the District Attorney's Office, uh, uh, our uh, police officer, Sergeant Matt Keneally, and Officer Sean Davili, I think I got that pronounced right, uh, you're instrumental um, in making sure that our treatment court runs the way it, it, it should. Uh, also, um, I'd like to thank Jason Thomas, our veterans uh, uh, program coordinator, who is really um, a force. Um, he is incredibly dedicated uh, to all things veteran. Uh, in fact, he even began uh, a committee in the Commonwealth, uh, in the trial court, uh, to bring some of our veteran employees um, to talk about the things that they can do and the ways in which we can honor them as they continue the mission of the trial court. Um, so it's been, uh, he's been a great addition uh, to our team. Um, Jason is also a major in the U.S. Army Reserve, a member of the JAG Corps, um, and a veteran. So we are very grateful for his service as well, the service of all of our veterans who are here today. These are the people that really make this court work. Uh, the team has volunteered to participate in the t this treatment court in addition to their day job because it's important and because they believe passionately in the work that they do. They have received special training uh, to do, do work um, with the Veterans uh, Treatment Court as a team, and they use evidence-based principles to ensure that we are delivering the best programmatic um, uh, services to our veterans and to help solve some really difficult issues. Many of our veterans come back to us um, with some real challenges and uh, we owe it to them uh, to, to provide them what we can provide to them to help them uh, really re-enter society in many, many sorts of ways. So this team, collectively under the leadership of Judge Clifford, really have done a great job in collaborating and bringing all people together to really iron out the details uh, to make sure that this veterans treatment court um, is you know, stellar and one of the best in, in the Commonwealth and frankly in the nation. We are frankly in the Massachusetts court system. I'm really proud as we, as John and I travel uh, and, and meet some of our colleagues in other states, it's truly remarkable. We're one of the few states that actually um, does certifications to make sure we are following evidence-based practices. Um, so we are really above the, above the curve um, from other, other states in, in terms of our, uh, the uh, integrity of the specialty courts. So the opening of the Plymouth County Veterans Treatment Court is really, frankly, in my view, long overdue. Uh, we've needed a uh, veterans treatment court in this area for a long time. Um, and it's designed to really support justice-involved veterans, um, individuals who, um, frankly, in, lar uh, in large part due to some of the challenges uh, they come back with from their service, uh, engage in criminal behavior that causes them to intersect um, in our system. Uh, and our hope is with access to treatment, um, we can reduce recidivism and improve uh, successful reentry in the unfortunate uh, result where if they end up uh, being incarcerated for a period of time. And we owe it to our veterans who have suffered un unimaginable uh, injuries um, because it's they who have put their lives uh, on the line, frankly, to keep us safe. The, the court session is uh, now uh, the sixth Veterans Treatment Court, I think, that we, we've opened up in Massachusetts, and the first in the Southeast region. Um, and uh, the first uh, Veterans Treatment Court was in 2012, I think. Um, Judge Hogan Sullivan uh, opened it up then. But um, the Plymouth uh, County Veterans Treatment Courts, as, as all of our other treatment courts, are really designed to affect and help those individuals, those veterans who are suffering from substance use uh, or uh, disorder, uh, behavioral health issues, traumatic brain injury. Um, our goal is really to reduce the re-arrests um, and to, re or to shorten, if, if incarceration is necessary, to shorten that period. Um, and also, we're trying to promote self-sufficiency. We're trying to, through treatment, um, through education, employment, and really just involvement with the community. The Veterans Treatment Corps provides a variety of programs consistent with supervision, and one of the major issues is, is um, our peer support. Um, uh, and the peer supports that our VA has been able to provide um, for our veterans, which really brings home, uh, it, it allows our veterans to really connect with people who have lived experience um, uh, 
similar to theirs, and it really resonates. So the work of our peer support um, folks, um, the VSOs and, and others, it, it's really invaluable in ensuring that we make progress with our veterans. Today we are in at the 18-year mark of the war against terrorism. Children who were born in 2001 are now old enough to join um, one of the armed forces. The constant conflicts in the Middle East and elsewhere around the world have produced multiple generations of soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen and women uh, protecting our interests. These, those service members and their family have shouldered and continue to bear the strain and sacrifice that has led, to, led many to experience trauma and long periods of family separation. When George Washington bid farewell to the Continental Army, he said, with a heart full of love and gratitude, I now leave you, uh, leave of you. I most devotely wish that your later days will be as prosperous and happy as the former ones have been, glorious and honorable. When veterans are done with this service, they come home to our communities. They come home to Brockton, um, and the, mainly the cities and towns where they grow up. And generally, they're not the same people um, as when they left. They have learned a, lo a lot of new things, traveled great distances. Many times, at least of late, they've traveled overseas. They've learned how to be disciplined, to follow the rules. They've also had some exceptional experiences that I'm sure have enriched their lives. And some have endured trauma that has impacted them in a profound and negative way. Veterans treatment courts are a tool that we can use to help our veterans uh, who enter our criminal justice system who may be struggling with some of the disorders I mentioned um, earlier. It's important that we continue to remind ourselves that these men and women have, have done for our country, uh, what they have done for our country, and that they're coming back to our communities at the end of their service. We owe it to them to acknowledge that some wounds of war are hidden. The trial court is dedicated to identifying those wounds, making those wounds come out so that we can talk about them and actually help and improve the way that we treat them. Uh, as they become involved in our system, primarily in the criminal justice system, but as often happens, uh, they, they may be involved in more than one uh, system within our trial court. So thank you uh, to all of you for being here today to celebrate this opening. It really is a milestone uh, for the city of Brockton and for Southeast Massachusetts in general. Uh, we're grateful that you're here, and again, thank you to all the veterans. Thank you. Court Administrator John um, Williams' ability to secure funding and build momentum of the development of treatment courts has been crucial um, to the trial court. We appreciate all of his efforts and certainly could not have had this kickoff um, without him. Court Administrator John Williams. Thank you, Judge Clifford. Good afternoon. I am very excited uh, to be here today to celebrate this important event which is uh, not only a way to uh, honor the service of men and women who have been in the military, but it's really to fulfill a moral debt that we owe to all of those who have offered themselves in sacrifice for our nation, um, some of whom, as Chief Justice Kerry noted, come back with wounds often too deep to see and that cast a shadow um, uh, over their efforts to come back and be parts of our communities. Um, Veteran services do mean something personal to me. My uh, grandfather uh, was wounded during his service in World War I in France and Belgium uh, and came back and I don't know in what ways uh, those experiences shaped the entire way our family um, uh, developed after that. But my father chose to enter the United States Air Force um, uh, during his college career in ROTC and was a missile launch officer during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, and I was born not that long afterwards in Kansas. Um, he moved from that into the uh, medical corps and during the Vietnam War ran a medevac squadron based out of the Philippine Islands bringing casualties um, out of Vietnam for two years from 1967 to 69. My brother-in-law uh, was a fighter pilot who served in um, Afghanistan and the Middle East. For 10 years, I worked closely with the National Guard uh, from 1999 to 2009 and attended countless deployment ceremonies and welcome home ceremonies and too many funerals of National Guardsmen, uh, Air National Guard, Army National Guard, um, who offered themselves to serve as well and spent time with them and with their families. Um, 
As Chief Justice Kerry mentioned, this is our sixth Veterans Treatment Court to open in Massachusetts, and Judge Mary Hogan Sullivan showed the way beginning in 2012 in Dedham with the very first proving out the value and the place that this court can have um, in our Commonwealth. Uh, the expansion is part of our larger strategic plan that we launched in 2013, based in part on her experiences, to expand specialty courts generally across Massachusetts. At that time, we had 24 specialty courts operating, mostly drug courts, and also a few mental health courts and the one uh, veterans treatment court. We asked our friends in the legislature to support this strategic initiative and requested specialty courts appropriations in fiscal year 2015. The legislature allowed us to launch then six new specialty courts, one being the second veterans treatment court located out of the Boston Municipal Court. That funding allowed us to pay for clinicians to conduct assessments and make referrals to treatment, probation officers to support the SAVE team at the Department of Veterans Services and to pay for some residential treatment beds. Legislative support has continued every year, allowing us to expand further and maintain the staff that was added. In fact, in fiscal year 2019, we were awarded $5.77 million in specialty court funding based on the progress that we had made to build an infrastructure with customized training for specialty court teams, creating the certification standards for drug courts that the chief mentioned, and partnering with the Center of Excellence for Specialty Courts. Those resources allowed the largest expansion of specialty courts in our history and the creation of 10 new drug courts, a mental health court, and planning for the operation of this, our sixth Veterans Treatment Court, which we celebrate today. In addition to now having a clinician in every specialty court, we're adding more coordinator positions to provide support, to collect data, and take some of the burden from our hardworking probation officers and chiefs. We also have been able to leverage the legislature support with federal grant funding, Congressman Lynch, and we certainly appreciate uh, the dedication and the commitment to our delegation to pursue additional funding to enhance the level of services that we provide. We do want the best for our veterans. They deserve it. We're grateful to the legislature, to the Congress, to Judge Clifford, and all of you for your support. All right, so the Plymouth County Veterans Treatment Court is actually open for business. We're open on Tuesdays uh, on courtroom three at two o'clock. It's a public courtroom. Anyone is welcome to come in and see what we're doing. We, um, we started officially in May, slowly but surely. We have six participants that are in our program net right now. Um, our target population is anyone, uh, court-involved men and women who have served in the armed forces in any capacity, in any branch, with any discharge status, um, including other than honorable or dishonorable. Um, while, our, while our court is in Plymouth County here in Brockton, um, we serve southeastern Mass, including Bristol County, um, including Cape and Islands, as long as the participant is um, able to get here and participate and they are accepted into our program and it is a voluntary program, um, we will take throughout the southeastern Mass area. I do want to um, do a shout out to my friend Judge Jim Byrne who runs the Veterans Court in Dedham, um, took over for Judge Hogan Sullivan. I neglected to mention him earlier, so thank you Judge Byrne for being here. Um, our goal in Veterans Treatment Court is uh, to help the veterans. Um, it's also to promote public safety. Um, these are important matters. Um, treatment plus accountability um, is what we're about in Veterans Treatment Court. So in the, uh, the first three rows or so, we have um, people who are either in our treatment court, um, on our treatment court staff, excuse me, um, or involved in some way, and I would like to recognize them um, briefly, and I'm gonna call them out by name, sorry. You're not gonna have to speak, but I'm gonna ask that you stand up, and I'm gonna ask um, that you re refrain from clapping until we announce everyone who's on our treatment court. And the goal of this is for me to recognize them because they do great work. And also, when we're done, shortly, um, we're all gonna be here to mingle around and we're happy to answer any questions um, and talk to you further about what we're doing. Um, so with that, um, Judge Dan Horahan, um, Assistant Chief Probation Officer Phil Landry, Probation Officer David, nope, stay standing up, stay standing up, come on, come on. Um, probation Officer David Engren, Thank you, Probation Officer Kristen Pierce. Assistant Probation Officer Shannon Manning. Where is Shannon? Hmm. Okay, there she is over there. Thank you. Court Officer Amy Hickey, Air Force. Rachel Seed, Veterans Justice Outreach, so Social Worker through the VA. 
Dave Odenweller, Department of Veteran Services, United States Marine Corps veteran. Detective Sean Devely, West Bridgewater Police, United States Marine Corps veteran. Sergeant Matthew Keneally, Whitman Police, United States Marine Corps veteran. Jason Thomas, Veterans Program Coordinator, Army. Sasha Monahan, Case Specialist Two. Michael Darsh, Assistant Clerk Magistrate, United States Marine Corps veteran. Attorney David Humphreys, United States Marine Corps veteran. Attorney Paul Healy. Assistant District Attorney Jason Haran. And Lauren Ovian, our college intern from Stoneville. She's in the back. Thank you very much for all the work you do. We appreciate it. Another crucial part of Veterans Treatment Court um, is the mentor program. We have mentors who are matched up with our veterans, and these mentors are veterans, um, and they are available to help uh, to meet with the veterans, the uh, participants in our court, on Tuesdays before the session and during the session, and also are available for a cup of coffee, for a phone call, um, people that are able to relate to our uh, participants. So. Um, since you're all here, we are in need of mentors, so if you know of anyone who is a veteran and may be willing to um, volunteer, uh, let them know about us. And if you have questions about that, or if they have questions about it, call our probation department. Phil Landry um, would answer those questions and can help with that, so keep that in mind. I have to use this audience for that plug, so thank you for that. Um, we are so fortunate to have the Brockton VA Medical Center right down the street here in Brockton. The amount of resources that are available to our veterans um, on this local VA campus is really shocking. Um, Medical Director um, Vincent Ng has been a friend and ally to our Veterans Treatment Court right from the start when he helped us with our training um, and the implementation and continues to be a valued partner um, of this treatment court. So, um, Director Ng, if you could say a few words, please. So good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here, and thank you, uh, Judge Clifford, for the introduction. Uh, the VA has been uh, very impressed, and I think we've been exceptionally uh, good partnership with, this, with the court system in terms of all the different uh, uh, veteran treatment court that we have in Massachusetts. And um, I was asking Rato Seat, our veteran justice coordinator, um, we already have five veterans court, uh, Brockton here, which is down the road from the VA here. Um, why, why does it take a little while to, to get it going here? And she said to me, we have to find the right person. So just Clifford, you're the right person. So thank you for taking the lead. Thank you for putting this together along with Rachel. And um, as you said, you, we already have six cases and the VA is here to support you. And you all, you and your staff, have came to our place about a few months back, look at different programs that we have, and I have to tell all of you, with the help of Congressman Lynch and the partnership with the city of Mayor, you have one of the best VA facilities in the country. And I can tell you that because we have a lot of visitors that come from throughout the country to visit Boston just to learn from us. So I know Congressman Lynch, you, you, you oversee us all the time. You can verify if I'm telling the truth or not. But <laughs> it, when is your turn? But I have, I, last Friday, we have a visit from a Congresswoman Brownlee from the state of California. And she came because she wanted to learn what we do in the VA here at Boston for women veterans. A lot of time when we talk about veterans, is male. Women veterans are going to be, it's a fast, faster growing sector of veterans. In a few years, the percentage of women veterans in our system would be close to 15% throughout the country. And I have to say that here in VA, we have some of the best program, especially right here at Brockton. We have one of the um, floors that only have a eight weeks program for severe PTSD program just for women. And we have 
patients come from throughout the country to get their treatment from us. The only one in the system, in the VA system. So take advantage of our services. We are here for you. We have great program, especially uh, with the mental health program here and other program that fit very well with the goal that you set up in your brochure here. And I'm honored to be here to work with all of you. Uh, we're gonna be uh, working hard to be a good partner. And for all the one, all the veterans, Monday is Veterans Day. My early greeting and thank you for all the veterans in the system. Thank you. Thank you. We are extremely honored to have Secretary Francisco Urena with us today. Um, Secretary Urena was appointed as the Secretary of Veterans Affairs by Governor Baker in 2015. He oversees services for hundreds of thousands of veterans statewide. I would also like to recognize his service as, as a United States Marine Corps veteran. Um, Secretary Urena, before you come up, um, I wanted to thank you personally uh, for the remarkable services um, that two of your employees provide to our Veterans Treatment Corps here in Plymouth County as well as um, the Norfolk County in Dedham. Um, specifically, Dave Odenweller, Dave O, as we affectionately refer to him, um, and Harold Litchfield, and affectionately referred to as Jamie, as we, can you stand up you two, Jamie and uh, Dave O, please? So these, Secretary, uh, just so you know, are our go-to people. Whenever I have asked anything from anyone, it is always these two that say, yes, we will do it. Doesn't matter what time, doesn't matter what day. Um, and it's not just our um, court-involved veterans in the Veterans Treatment Court. It's court-involved veterans everywhere and throughout um, the Southeastern Mass area. Um, I don't know what we would do without them. I just very much appreciate that you let us have them. Um, and I really appreciate all the work you have done. So with that, I would like to introduce Secretary Arena. Well, thank you very much, and what a privilege it is to be here in Brockton. Uh, for the few of you that don't know about the Veteran Treatment Court, uh, this is a tremendous program, and this is, is a one that we are so very proud. Obviously, it takes a village. You saw so many uh, folks that are just part of this Brockton court, and the six other courts, uh, whether we are in Dedham and Brockton, is in Boston and Lawrence, Framingham, Holyoke, uh, these are uh, true places that are changing the scope of the veterans' lives for the better. Having veterans have that sense of success upon returning home, because for the most part, veterans are successful upon returning home, and do not ever confuse uh, that aspect. Yes, from time to time, veterans do need a hand up, and it is the Veteran Treatment Corps, among so many of the other uh, social programs that we have, that gives the veterans that ability, gives the veterans that ability to uh, address the underlying cause of the, the nature, what brought them to court. And instead of housing them in a prison or a jail, it gives them that opportunity to be successful. And the numbers are, are stated in the sense of recidivism. One of the lowest recidivism is the aspect of the treatment that these veterans receive. And their ability not to recommit again is a nature of that sense of uh, treatment. And as it was stated by Judge Clifford, we are so very proud of the work of the volunteers. It is a focus of volunteers that often are supplementing the work of the members of the judiciary or members of our safety, members of the courts in so many ways. Veterans providing that sense of guidance and veterans relate to any other veteran in so many ways, especially our Vietnam veterans that did not receive that sense of welcome home that our generation of veterans receive, often enough have the biggest impact in these courts giving that sense of guidance to younger generations for those 18 weeks in so many cases, giving that sense of connection, of support in and out of the court so that these veterans could be successful, so that these veterans could have a chance of an opportunity. And I tell you, the biggest impact that I see often enough is in these graduations. When we go after 18 sessions have happened, and in some cases 24 for some others, but nonetheless, the life changes that you hear from when a veteran walked in, perhaps it was his lowest demeanor, and when he walks out of that graduation after his completion of his session to be able to be a leader that he was trained to be in so many ways. We're so very honored. Massachusetts is home to 365,000 veterans. 
a veteran service officer in every city and town, a place of connection for the support and the benefits that they have earned. And we are proud of our status as best in nation for the state uh, to provide that sense of connection, the sense of uh, benefits that our partners in the legislature and so many others have con constantly kept up. And the Veteran Treatment Court is among those. These six courts are six opportunities in these six counties to be able to have access to treatment, access to support, and more importantly, a pathway to veteran success. Thank you so very much, Judge, Your Honor, and all those in, in, in focus of giving the sense of connection to our veterans. Again, treatment courts all over are a big aspect of giving our citizens a path of success, and the Veteran Treatment Court is among that aspect. Thank you so very much. God bless you all, and happy Veterans Day. Thank you. We are so honored, I am so honored, um, to have United States Congressman Steve Lynch with us here today. Um, his tireless work, um, his, he is tireless in his work on behalf of veterans. In May of this year, um, as chairman of the Subcommittee on National Security, Congressman Lynch held a hearing on veteran and active duty military suicides to examine the enduring and pressing emergency of military suicides among veterans and active duty service members. Um, he has made countless trips. I tried to find out a true number, but there's so many congressmen we couldn't keep track, to Iraq and Af Afghanistan. His commitment to our veterans is unparalleled. Um, we appreciate that he's here, um, and I'm so honored that you agreed to speak. So with that, Congressman Lynch. May it please the court. <laughs> I, I'm afraid I'll, I'll, I'll miss some of the judges here, but uh, uh, Chief Judge uh, Kerry, of course, uh, Judge, Judge Clifford, uh, Judge Hogan Sullivan. Uh, I was a frequent uh, flyer to her, uh, her court uh, with, uh, with veterans uh, early on. Uh, Judge Delorati, uh, he's paying me hush money. I grew up with Judge Delorati. <laughs> Judge Daly, Judge Byrne, uh, I'm paying Byrne hush money, actually. Uh, <laughs> I do want to say thank you, a special thank you to Vincent Ng. So Vincent is our regional administrator for the VA, and I, I'm a frequent flyer to, to the VA uh, hospitals. Uh, in my, I'm, wonderful, I, I, I'm wonderfully blessed to, to have three remarkable uh, VA facilities in my district. I have Brockton, which is one of the older ones, but I also have uh, Jamaica Plain and West Roxbury. West Roxbury is having a flood right now. You know that, right? Okay. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll get right on that. Uh, but uh, it's just a blessing to have, you know, we have, we have veterans who travel from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, to come to, to Brockton and, and to our other facilities to get the treatment that they need. And uh, like I say, we, we are just blessed to have Vincent in charge of all that, and uh, he does a remarkable job. Uh, Secretary Urena, I first met him in, uh, in Fallujah, in Iraq. Uh, like Judge Clifford, I am, not, uh, I, I am not a veteran. I have not had that high honor. Uh, but as she intimated, I have been to Iraq 30 times and I've been to Afghanistan about 16 times. I was there about 10 days ago and uh, spent an awful lot of time with our, our, our soldiers, the men and women that, that we serve. So I figure since I didn't serve, I should serve those who have and those that do, our active military and our veterans. And uh, one of the blessings that I have is that one of the committees that I am a chair of uh, actually provides oversight over the VA and over, over our military. So that's why I get to spend so much time with them uh, so often. Uh, I want to give one, uh, well, let, let me first say, we are working on the, the veteran drugs court Drug courts were a creature of, of Massachusetts and of state legislatures. New York's big on it now. It's sort of catching on. Uh, the federal government is late to the game. But I am proud to say that uh, with 135 co-sponsors, uh, many, many Republicans on that bill, as well as Democrats, and we agree on nothing lately in D.C., the Democrats and Republicans, uh, we just passed the House version of the uh, of the Veterans Drug Court uh, Assistance Act. So hopefully we'll be able to plug in uh, federal res resources into what you all are doing already in a very, very big way. Uh, 
Just one story uh, about you, about what you're doing and why it is so necessary. I, I was in uh, Camp, uh, actually, uh, Camp Leatherneck not too long ago. Uh, it's a, it was originally a for, French Foreign Legion uh, camp. It's in uh, uh, Helmand Province in, in Afghanistan, kind of a rough neighborhood. And uh, there were a bunch of young Marines there chasing the Taliban up and down the province. And uh, like most of my trips, I get, an, I get an opportunity to sit down with uh, men and women in uniform and, and talk to them about their experience. And uh, a standard question that I ask all the time is, you know, this was a small rifle company, maybe about 25, 30, 30 men and women. And I said, uh, who's here on your first tour of duty? And, and a few hands went up. And then I said, how, how many here on your second tour of duty? A couple more hands went up. And then I said, who's here on your third tour of duty? And a, a good number, eight, eight or 10. And then I, but I, I kept asking, I got all the way to seven tours of duty before I ran out of Marines. So what we are seeing, what you are doing, is a, is a result of that in very many ways. And, and, and Secretary Arena is correct. Most cases, uh, our, our veterans return successfully. But with the frequency of these tours of duty and the stresses of being in civilian life and then back in, in the battle, and then out again, then back in the battle. Uh, I just think it causes a disequilibrium in, in the minds and in the hearts of, of our, our veterans. And I think we have, to, we have to recognize that and we have to shape our response so that when they come home, they are embraced and they are given the level and the nature of the support that, that enables them to make that tough transition in a, in a meaningful way and in a successful way. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's not possible for family to understand that they're getting a, a different person home, a different member of their family home than when they, when they deployed. And I think the fact that you have so many uh, Marines, so many of veterans that are in the veteran drug court infrastructure. That's where our success lies. And also in the awareness on, on the part of our judges, our wonderful judges, who, who recognize that special need uh, and, and understand that, you know, we're not going to incarcerate our way out of this problem. It's really a matter of treatment. And, and, and recognition and appreciation of the, the service that these veterans have rendered. So I am enormously uh, proud and happy to be here. I really do appreciate the work that you do every day in, in the Veteran Drug Court. Uh, we need to do more, uh, and, and I, I certainly would commit to you that whatever resources that I can deliver and what the Massachusetts delegation can deliver, uh, you, you will have it. And uh, you already have our, our enormous uh, appreciation and, and respect and, uh, and uh, you know, deep, deep gratitude for the job that you do every single day. So on this eve of Veterans Day, and may God bless our veterans and may God bless these United States of America. Thank you. All right, before we officially end these ceremonies, I wanted to recognize a person who has put a lot of effort uh, into making um, the back of the house and the front of the house look very beautiful. These little touches that you may notice as you walk out the door, these labors of love. Shannon Manning, can you come up here for a moment, please? <laughs> Shannon is an assistant probation officer, just got married. All right, so um, I am cl officially closing uh, this ceremony. Members of the Veterans Court will be mingling around. If you should have any questions or have any ideas for mentors, please come talk to us. There are refreshments in the back. Please help yourself. Um, again, on the, as everyone has indicated, on the eve of 
uh, Veterans Day, I want to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service. Um, God bless our veterans and God bless America. Thank you.